To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Please stand clear of the doors. For favor, we invite you to the dance. Since this year, the wild and the wild. When in the wild, 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 Hello and welcome to Miles from Main Street, your Far From Disney podcast. My name is Mikhailo. And I'm Brian. And we're here to talk about Disney World. But especially coping away from Disney. Which we know a lot about being from the Midwest. Here at Miles from Main Street, our preferred travel agency is Magical Vacations by Kimberly. Kimberly is a Disney expert and can handle all of your Disney planning needs. She can also plan Universal and all major cruise lines. Contact Kimberly at Magical Vacations by Kimberly at Yahoo.com. And find her on Facebook and Instagram under Magical Vacations by Kimberly. So today on Miles from Main Street, we're going to do a little bit of a Q&A. But before that, we're going to go over some of our giveaway stuff. Brian, do you want to go through uh, some of that? Yeah, so we've got some people that have already started getting involved in our giveaway. Uh, As we said last week, we're giving away the Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom complete base set and a couple of extra special cards, specialty cards. Um, And along with that, we have Kimberly Ledford here this week. She's going to help us. Um, And Kimberly is... Uh, one of our partners, uh, Magical Vacations by Kimberly. You've heard us talk about her before. So now she's finally here. She's going to talk to us about what she's doing and she, how she's helping out with the contest. Yay, Kimberly. <laughs> hey, thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Well, okay. My name is Kimberly Ledford. Um, I am a travel agent, uh, born and raised in Orlando. I no longer live in Orlando, but I still live in Florida. Um, I became a travel agent about seven years ago. I grew up at the parks and it just kind of seemed like a natural transition. I was already booking vacations for friends and family and finally stumbled on the fact that I could actually get paid to do that. (laughs) So um, it doesn't cost my clients any more money to use me than to um, call in directly, but I get paid commission instead of Disney paying someone in a call center. Um, I do, I will get quotes for clients. Um, I help them plan their trips. I teach them how to use the, my Disney experience app and how to make dining reservations and fast passes. Once those come back, um, I am very, very up to speed on what's going on at Disney. I get daily emails from them, from their travel partner email account, which is not, doesn't go to the general public. It just comes to travel agents. So I stay up to speed on what's going on and I just, I enjoy it. I love it. I love booking Disney vacations, especially for first timers um, because I'm a bit of a Disney nerd. Actually, I'm a huge Disney nerd. And (laughs) so it's fun. I just, I have fun with it. Um, I also do Universal and all the cruise lines and Sandals and Beaches resorts, but Disney's my baby. And I've been doing it for seven years and um, I love it. I just love it. Um, I don't do it full time. I work in healthcare also. So I've been through the COVID craziness in the hospital last summer. Um, but this this is kind of, it's a, it's not a hobby. That's for sure. I really enjoy doing it. It takes a lot of work, but I'm very passionate about it. And I know Disney very well. So I enjoy helping others make the best out of their vacation and try to design what's best for their needs and not just, you know, send them to the most expensive resort or whatever. I try to find what best suits their family and what their needs are for their vacation. So what do you think is one of your go-tos when you're helping plan? What do you mean? Some, the go-to Like resorts? something Disney specific. What's, what, yeah, what's, what's one of your go-tos? Uh, for anybody that's going down there? Um, Well, a lot of people think if they've been to Disney as a kid and they haven't been to 20 years, people think they can just go to Disney. You can't just go to Disney anymore. It's it's much more complicated than that. Everything is driven by the app. 
with the dining and the reservations and your, you know, the magic bands, which are no longer free, sadly. Um, it's, I don't know what my go-to is. It really depends on what they need. If they're going for an anniversary trip or a re, um, graduation trip or a birthday trip, I try to design their vacation around their needs. So I don't have like one go-to. I base it on conversations I have with my clients and then kind of design it for them. That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's always kind of been something that has been in the back of my head to think about jumping into. Um, because I mean, I'm the same way. Uh, uh, Brian and I are family. And so uh, our family has come to us multiple times asking for us to, mm -hmm. to plan out trips and stuff like that. They're actually trying to do that right now to us. <laughs> well, I can so, help with that. Exactly. Um, so yeah, it's, it's always been something that, that I've been interest, interested in. So um, that's awesome that it's something that you've been able to uh, get going. Um, so why don't you uh, tell us about um, this giveaway uh, package that you have for us? I, once you approached me about it, I was like, oh, this is a good idea. And of course I was there a couple weeks ago. Um, I've been probably four or five times since uh, Magic Kingdom has reopened. I've been back to all the parks. Now is a great time to go because the crowds are really low. Mm -hmm. um, there's probably not going to be a better time. So I was looking around and I picked up this little, it's kind of, a, it's the 2021 Mickey Skyliner model. It's like a little souvenir. It looks like one of the Skyliner carts. Mm -hmm. um, I'll send you a picture of it. So you'll be able to attach it somewhere if you need to. Mm -hmm. But I just thought that would be a nice little, gift and of course the skyliner is still new and that's you know this is something that can be a keepsake um it looks like you could even use it as an ornament on a tree if you wanted to it kind of has mm -hmm. like a little hook um or you can kind of put it on a stand uh, like a you know just kind of a decorative little keepsake yeah I, I think i think i saw a picture of it at one point and i thought it looked really cool and it's like super relevant uh and it's something that i haven't been back yet um since the Skyliner has been up. Actually, I think I have been back. I just skipped it um, for when I was out there. Uh, but oh, it's you something have to do that, the Skyliner. <laughs> yeah, it's something I'm really excited about to get onto. So. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, especially now since you get your own cart, you're not crammed in there mm. um, because of COVID. They're being very, very careful. Disney is very clean. Um, I'm in Florida, so we haven't, we never really closed down completely. Um but since Disney's been back, I feel safer there than I do at most grocery stores. It's very, very <laughs> clean. And I, yeah, I, I would not hesitate to go back several more times, which I probably will <laughs> before <Yeah. laughs> summer even gets here. Yeah, definitely. So so uh, don't forget, everybody, all you have to do is like our 20th post or um, like our uh, episode 21 post and then share that out. Uh, as long as you do that, you'll be entered into our uh, drawing to win. Yeah, and both posts will have uh, kind of a video. It's a visual soundbite from the episode so that you guys can take a little sample out to your friends and be sure to share that out and like it from, the, from that post. Um, then we'll know that you are kind of helping us out and we'll make sure you guys get entered to win this. Uh, this great prize. Um, Kimberly, thanks so much for helping us out with this. Of course. Anytime. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a pleasure. Definitely. So Brian and I are going to go over some things about us, uh, a couple favorites, uh, some facts about us, um, kind of some Disney things come, uh, a couple of our stories. Um, I think Brian, you have a couple questions uh, lined up already. Sure. Uh, why don't we start with basically how'd you get into Disney? What brought you to this point? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my my story is interesting, um, and it's 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 probably kind of pretty similar to a lot of, a lot of people how they get started, and that was kind of like family trips. Um, from what I understand, my parents uh, went on their honeymoon at Disney. Um, so I think that's kind of why they ended up bringing uh, me and the rest of the family back to Disney uh, a whole lot. Um, but so I started I started going when I was really young. Um, 
and I, I always enjoyed it. It was always really cool. Um, my grandparents ended up moving to Florida at one point. So that gave us another reason to uh, go out to Disney. Uh, but the real time when I kind of figured out that I think I'm like really into this and like I want to like dive deep into it was when uh, I think it was like 2006 I went um, and uh, I really enjoyed uh, Epcot and just being there uh, and then the fireworks and everything um, with the music um, kind of like really hit me and that was because um, a DCI drum corps called the cadets actually did uh, did that same music so uh, that I thought that was really cool uh, and and um, the music to illuminations is just amazing anyways um, but that like really captivated me and then I went home after that trip and um, ended up listening to that music uh, a whole lot and then just listening to a lot of park music. And that's kind of really when I was like, you know, I think, I think I'm really into this. Um, so that was kind of my moment. Um, and of course it incorporated music. Anybody who knows me knows that I'm really deep into music. Um, so it's, I mean, I'm, I'm not totally surprised on that. And then, I mean, after that, all bets were off. I was, I was really into it and I, I wanted to go back. Um, I was always looking for an opportunity to go back to Disney. So um, that's kind of, that was kind of the moment that I like kind of realized I was really into it. Yeah. And uh, we've talked before about the cadets and the whole drum and bugle corps thing. Uh, we, we both connect there and I do remember a lot of that with the cadets and that was always something that was in my mind uh, through the years too. Um, the uh, as I was growing up, I was always into Disney. My sister and I would watch, you know, all the specials that they'd have on TV and and wish that we could go. Um, we just uh, when I was growing up, we didn't really have the money for us to be able to make the trip, but. Um, later in life, uh, when I got into college, um, my mom was able to take me down and uh, it, it kind of blew my mind how much different it was from, say, going to Six Flags. Um, and so then <clears throat> as I moved on in life, got married kind of right out of college and we took our honeymoon down there and had a wonderful time. And I was still kind of in that mindset that it was kind of expensive and I can't really afford to be doing anything Disney. Um, but then uh, we took the kids and quickly took another trip right after it. And that's when I started getting into it was after that trip with the kids, like I started really diving into it and found that it is uh, quite an amazing place <laughs> and that I needed to be a part of it. Um, you know, I was, I was diving into a lot of social media when I came back and that's what really kind of fed my appetite for it and kept growing my interest in it. So, um, you know, that's where I was, I was heading with it and how I kind of got to this point. So, um, Mikhailo, I know you, you used a lot of social media when you were getting into it too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, that's that's another question that I would have is kind of what got you started with that social media. Uh, I know that I, the big one that I first started with was the the Diz Unplugged, um, and their their shows are are very well organized. They have a lot of really good content, and a lot of what they do is reviews. Uh, they'll end up reviewing hotels and restaurants and all kinds of stuff. So I found that really interesting to kind of watch that and then plan trips uh, just because then all of a sudden you have a little bit of an insight at, into kind of what you're getting yourself into because uh, there's there's so much to do. And I I haven't even scratched the surface of, of all the things that you can do in Disney. So kind of knowing uh, what's, what's decent and what you should be uh, – investing your money into uh is really good and that's that's something that they definitely help me help me with plus it's just kind of like they they have their news section and everything so you feel a lot more connected to what's happening uh and along the lines of that um other 
vloggers like uh, Tim Tracker and um, Lou Mangiello, uh, people who will actually go into the park uh, and kind of spend time in the park. Uh, I've always really liked that too, because you actually feel connected to what's happening, especially with like live vlogs. Uh, I love those because it literally feels like you're, you're in Disney at that moment and you're like experiencing everything. Um, and with Tim Tracker, I've always really enjoyed uh, his vlogs because it really feels like you're going through the park with a friend. Um, I, I would like to think that if uh, I lived in Florida, Tim Tracker and I would be friends, but uh, <laughs> that might be thinking a little <laughs> too highly of myself. Um, but it's, he's just such a cool dude. And every single time you go into the park with him, um, that's kind of what it feels like. It feels like you're, you're hanging out with friends uh, out at Disney. Um, and he just, I mean, he does all the, the stuff that I would really like to do at Disney. He just gets to do it just about every week. So, <laughs> um, or every other day, it seems sometimes. I know, right? Yeah. Social media has always helped me out along the way. It really helped me dive into the, the details and, you know, gobble up all the little tidbits of information that I could get. Um, so it's really enhanced my experience when I go down there. Yeah, and there's there's two other uh, people that, and it's it, it, they're kind of in the Tim Tracker canon. It's kind of funny because they'll they'll do videos together, and that's uh, Justin Scard and Adam the Woo. Um, Justin Scard is more of a uh, Disneyland vlogger because uh, he he lives in Anaheim, um, and then Adam the Woo uh, he started off with kind of these like. Um, like break-in videos kind of where he would just kind of like make his way into areas he's not supposed to be. Uh, so he got in trouble a couple of times with, uh, with Disney with that. But I think now, now they're all on good terms, but those are, um, those are some, some Disney vloggers that, that I watch pretty regularly. It's kind of funny if you watch um, Adam, the woo videos, if he back in the day when, when Tim Trecker had his curly, curly mustache, Anytime Adam the Woo would see somebody with a curly mustache, he'd say Tim Tracker. And then uh, the same thing with uh, with Tim Tracker, where he would see somebody that looks like Adam the Woo. And he'd be like, Adam the Woo. So it's it's funny and it, it's it's cool to see that they're all they're all uh, friends and, and they all kind of do things together. Um, and that's kind of what the whole um, like that whole scene feels like. Um, with like the Disney vloggers and and the Disney fans, it all feels like we're we're all just a bunch of friends. Yes, it's very very cool to see all that stuff um, as they get together. You know, the whole crossover thing happens, and uh, <laughs> so it's fun to watch some of that. <laughs> uh, but I'm wondering, uh, Mikhailo, what's your favorite ride? So my my favorite ride. Uh, is tower of terror um that's i think i've said that on here before so um tower of terror definitely my uh my favorite ride um but it's it's kind of i mean i feel like tower of terror is is like the full package for me uh it's kind of spooky uh i like spooky rides uh haunted mansion is another one of my favorites it's got some amazing theming uh, just the theme in general uh, is amazing. And I've always been one to enjoy um, to enjoy like original ideas from from Disney. Uh, and the Tower of Terror kind of was developed as um, one of those original ideas. Uh, it has like the Twilight Zone Tower or the Twilight Zone uh, kind of theme to it, but it started off as like their own, uh, their own idea. It wasn't. It wasn't already intellectual property that they were leveraging. Um, so I, I, I really enjoy things like that. Things like rock and roller coaster also is another big favorite of mine because it's just um, such a great idea for a ride. Um, not that I, I dislike things like, uh, like the frozen ride and stuff like that. Um, but I just, I don't know. I just really enjoy when Disney Imagineers are coming up with something new, um, and uh, a really original idea. Uh, so that's why I really enjoyed that ride. Um, but it's kind of funny. It's, it's like picking, picking your favorite child because they all kind of have something, something to offer. Uh, like haunted mansion is just a classic and I love it. Um, uh, parts of the Caribbean, parts of the Caribbean, also one of my favorites, uh, just a classic. Um, 
Expedition Everest, uh, probably my favorite roller coaster. Uh, but I mean, if I had to pick one, it would definitely have to be Tower of Terror. Yeah, I'm with you on the you know picking your favorite children type of thing. <laughs> um, it it's it was hard like for a long time. I'm my kids would always ask me, "What's your favorite? What's your favorite?" And I would not know how to answer it. And finally, I'm like, "Okay, fine." It's Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you know, it's just, I think really what it is, is that you go back to watching those videos when I was uh, younger and there was a lot of video coming up with, with that train going, you know, around the mountain. And so when I was there the first time, I was like, oh, I got to hit all these things I've seen on TV. And that was one of the things that popped into my head. Um, so every time I've been there, it's something that I've had to ride. And for whatever reason, when I'm there, I haven't had any trouble getting on it. Usually can find short weights and can jump right on it. So, so while I say that one is my favorite, uh, it, it's still hard to pick because like you said, you know, Tower of Terror is a great one. Rock and roller coaster. I would agree that Expedition Everest is the best roller coaster that's there, uh, but you know you got the little ones over in Magic Kingdom that's fun too. For for some reason, Small World has become a must do for us. Mm. We have to do that, um, and I consider that a smaller ride. I don't know maybe because it's called Small World, but mm-hmm. um, you know just that and uh, the Peter Pan and Winnie the Pooh, those are all must do rides for us. So. That's and that's that's funny because I consider those not like necessarily one and dones, but it's like I don't have to hit those rides every single time I go into the park, um, just because I mean they're they're super nostalgic and they're great rides. Peter Pan's Flight, I had not been on before a couple trips ago because uh, it, I just thought it was one of those just like random dark rides. Uh, but then you get in there and. Uh, it's so cool, like just like you're you're hanging uh, in in that the ships and everything, and you're flying over London and everything. Uh, I thought it was very cool. Um, so there there's definitely fun to be had uh, in, at those smaller rides. It's just not something that I always have to do, uh, which I actually might end up doing on this next trip because we want to we want to take our time and and we feel like we with the lower crowds will be able to kind of do more than we usually do so hopefully we can get it all in before 5 p.m though <laughs> <laughs> so you told me that tower of terror is your favorite ride would that make hollywood studios your favorite park i would say yes and i have a complicated relationship with my favorite parks at disney because again they all have something great in them um and and they all have a reason to go and love them Uh, i would say hollywood studios is my favorite park right now especially with um star wars land and tower terror um mainly because it just feels like the most complete park um, they just got done building all this stuff. Everything is all in place already. You can go and enjoy it now. Um, I would say my my favorite overall park, like the park that will always be my favorite, is Epcot. Um, and that's just because just the theme of Epcot and the idea of Epcot resonates uh, within me a lot. Um, one of my uh, super underrated, my the a ride that I think that is super underrated is living with the land. I don't know why. I just love going on living with the land. Um, and it's again, it's just like that that uh, edutainment um, that is just so cool and that like Ed, Epcot is all about. Uh, so I've always I've always really enjoyed that, and I've always really enjoyed kind of the futuristic feeling in the front, and then the the countries in the back. Um, I just love walking through countries. So, um, right. I would say right now it's Hollywood studios kind of with everything going on there. Um, but overall the, my favorite park, um, will always be Epcot, but right now I just can't say that with, um, all the change that's about to happen and all the construction that's currently happening. But all that construction and all that change is going to be 
uh, pretty awesome, I think, when it's complete. Oh, it's, it's going to be epic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and hopefully they're still going to do everything that they initially had presented that they were doing. Um, mm -hmm. We'll see. But yeah, when I think about a favorite park, again, it's back to that favorite child type of question. And, uh, you know, when we go, you know, Magic Kingdom is a non-starter. We are going to go to Magic Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Um, that's Disney, right? Uh, but when it comes to all these other parks, uh, I, I'm i thinking Studios is my favorite as well. Um, I think overall, that's probably my favorite, mm -hmm. especially now that Star Wars is there. Uh, the, Star Wars has been my favorite series of films since I was able to walk. So <laughs> uh, it's, you know, it's hard for me to say that i would rather go to another park now so uh, studios is definitely um something that i'm looking forward to seeing when i when i'm able to get back so uh <clears throat> here's a question for you what is your favorite resort um this can be a resort that you haven't stayed at yet too how about the Walt Disney World Resort is my favorite resort. <laughs> uh, resort Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darn it. Um, <laughs> so I have not stayed in Polynesian. I have uh, ran around it a few times, um, and I just absolutely love it. So I think for one that I have, you know, I think that's one that I would have to put up there as a favorite. And also the uh, French Quarter. I love how quaint it is. It's the smallest. I love how quiet it is. But I'm also a big fan of New Orleans. And so that right there, the whole French Quarter type feeling that it gives you makes it one of my favorites too. Now, I was watching a video recently and they showed the all-star movies, like the front of the building. And I was like, oh man, because All Star Music was the first place I stayed. Mm -hmm. I most recently stayed at All Star Movies, and seeing that video gave me so much nostalgia for staying there. That you know, I, I think All Stars have to be one of those favorites as well, just because I've stayed there so many times. So, what about you? So, Brian, uh, just a sidebar. Uh, when we finally decide to go on a trip and just like blow all our money on a big family trip, uh, we're staying at the Polynesian because the Polynesian is also my favorite resort that I've never been able to stay at. Um, it's just, just the theme to it is so cool. Um, I love uh, walking in and having that, um, that like waterfall um right next to you and everything um yeah it's, it's just all very cool and the food there um i'm i'm actually going to be able to eat at kona cafe this coming trip but i've always wanted to eat at ohana um so that's that's definitely a must do uh brian let's make this happen <laughs> i agree uh my wife and i have plans for our big anniversary trip which may not end up being our trip next year uh, for our 20th. So maybe it'll wait to our 25th where mm -hmm. we're, you know, we're doing it all up. We're staying at uh, Polynesian for, for however long we're getting the at annual pass holder just so we can bounce in and out of everywhere. You know, um, mm -hmm. we're doing it up big and, and that's the place I want to stay. And one of the things that, stayed with me after our last trip was the smell of that lobby <laughs> that I don't know what they're pumping in there, but a couple of these other candle companies have been able to capture it in a candle. And that's what I keep in my house. Mm -hmm. I like, I love that smell. So um, just another thing to add to the list of what makes Polly so great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I do completely agree with you about the all stars and it's, it's kind of one of those things where I've stayed there a lot because they're cheap, obviously. Uh, but also I just don't, I don't really do much at these hotels that I stay at at Disney, mainly because they're really just kind of a bed. Um, but 
uh, recently I was able to stay at Coronado Springs, uh, which is an, uh, another really great resort. Um, and that resort is basically a deluxe resort, but at a moderate price, um, which is great because it's just got all of these amazing amenities. Um, and so we were able to kind of like take some time there and, and hang out. But at the end of the day, I would always stay at the, at the uh, value resorts because they, it was just a bed like, and, and we weren't really there that much. Um, so that's kind of why uh, the all-stars has a special place in my heart because that just feels like Disney. Uh, Cause we would always stay there uh, when we were going there. And so it just it kind of feels like you're at home and like, it feels like you've, you've arrived, like getting to that lobby and standing in that lobby uh, waiting to check in like that just like feels like the bidding beginning of of your vacation um, also art of animation is another big one um, that I've always really enjoyed because it kind of has that that same value feel um, but everything is like nice and updated because uh, it's a it's a newer resort um, so that's that's another one that I really enjoy too but the the all stars will always have a special place in my heart yeah definitely um so then i guess that brings us to snacks what kind of food <laughs> are, you, are you picking up as you're walking through the park uh so a must have for me is always a turkey leg i uh am a big carnivore <laughs> i like i like to eat meat and uh <laughs> there's just something about about holding the turkey leg and just chowing down on a turkey leg at disney um, and just the way that they make them is is really cool. Um, and they they smoke them and they they taste so good. Um, I always thought that they like injected like salt water into them to get like that flavor in there. Um, but they're it's it's just really a, a must have when I go to Magic Kingdom. I can't wait. I am at at the recording of this podcast right now. I am three days away from from eating a disney turkey leg and i cannot wait that yeah i did not get one on our last trip and i don't know why i didn't do that so uh can you save a little bit and bring it back for me uh probably not but i will save a couple gideon cookies for you oh yes definitely do that i can't wait to try those mm -hmm. um those things look amazing uh but you can't get Gideon's when you're in a park. True. Yeah. So anyway, I will be definitely picking up that turkey leg. And I also need to be picking up a citrus swirl. Mm -hmm. Not a Dole Whip. <laughs> uh, sorry for those of you that enjoy <clears throat> Dole Whips. Uh, I just find the citrus swirl to be a little bit better of a treat. Um, other than that, um, one, the one thing that I have to have every time is the Mickey pretzel. Mm. yeah and there's there's also something about that the disney popcorn um that i do feel like i always kind of have to have some of that disney popcorn <clears throat> and it makes me sad right now with covid that you're not able to uh kind of eat while you're roaming because i used to i used to grab a popcorn and just like sit in a line i remember when i went to disneyland and i was in line for big thunder mountain and <laughs> I just like before I got in line, I grabbed a popcorn and I just sat there and just like ate popcorn while in line. Um, and it's just it's those little things that you're able to do that you kind of take for granted now that you can't do them. But yeah, that's that was one thing that we did all the time too is grab a bucket of popcorn and you know, Dad, I'm hungry. Here, have some popcorn. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, that's going to be rough that we can't eat while in line. So we talked about snacks. What about restaurants? What is your favorite restaurant on property? Well, I think it's going to have to depend on whether I'm going for breakfast or dinner. Mm. Um, now, I haven't had breakfast at my favorite dinner restaurant, and I haven't had dinner at my favorite breakfast restaurant. <laughs> but so for breakfast, we've done Ohana a couple of times, and we absolutely love Ohana's breakfast. I hope that we can eventually get back to the way things were, where we had, you know, characters coming around and the food just 
you know, flying at you at <laughs> Bohana. Um, so that that would be my favorite place to go for breakfast. Mickey waffles are a definite must do when you're there. Um, and for dinner, uh, I got to take my wife to California Grill on her honeymoon and watch fireworks from our table. And it was amazing. So that's always going to be at the top of my list. Yeah, I'm not a big breakfast person. Um, I'll usually grab like maybe a yogurt or something um, and just run out the door. Um, so I've never, I've never actually, uh, I have had breakfast before at Disney and it was actually at Sun, Sunshine Seasons. Uh, and that breakfast was really good. Um, so it kind of makes me want to try breakfast at Disney, but it's just, that's just kind of like who I am. Like my breakfast is, my breakfasts <laughs> are terrible uh, when I'm just like eating at home. Cause I'll just kind of like wake up and eat a little something and then just go on about my day. Like I don't really uh, have breakfast uh, most of the time. Um, but yeah, that, that sounds like, uh, yeah. And you got me thinking now that maybe I should, <laughs> should <laughs> book somewhere to have breakfast at, at one of these days. Um, but yeah, my, so I have, um, I have two, uh, and this is kind of funny. I've, I've got one that's kind of weird. Uh, not really weird, but it's like kind of one of the last places you'd think of. Uh, and then another one that is just kind of like, really? Uh, but the first one uh, I would say is the boathouse. It's probably the, the nicest place I've eaten at Disney. And the food was amazing. And like just, uh, steak Oscar style would recommend a hundred percent. It was so good. Um, and I actually, uh, uh, hopefully Lou is listening. Uh, I listened to Lou when he would always talk about the boathouse. So I was like, you know what? I kind of want to try boathouse. Um, and so we were able to, we were able to book it and we were able to get out there and, and go to the boathouse. And, um, it was really good. Uh, but another one that is kind of like a family favorite, well, at least between me, my brother, and my sister, is Rainforest Cafe. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like the last place you would think of because there's just all of these other amazing places to go eat. And then there's Rainforest Cafe. Um, and it, it really comes down to nostalgia where um, back in the day when it was downtown Disney, um, that's always the place that we would go to for some reason. Like we would always kind of radiate towards, um, towards that place. So yeah, it's, it's kind of weird, like rainforest cafe really, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a family thing. So yeah. <laughs> you know, teach their own. I just feel like rainforest cafe is like Starbucks, you know, one on every corner, except yeah. <laughs> the corner is a, a, a tourist attraction of some sort. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we got to, we, we go there when we go visit the mall of America, we went there the last time we were there and it's fine. <clears throat> the kids really enjoy it. So I guess that's why I, you know, I'll go there, but when I'm in Disney, I'd rather go somewhere that I can't go somewhere else. Yeah. And, so and, and, that's, and that's, that's the thought. That's why I kind of think it's weird, but it's like, I don't know. It's just something, something <laughs> that we enjoy to do. <laughs> So the last thing I was thinking we should talk about is what kind of a souvenir are you bringing home? Uh, uh, <laughs> that's kind of a loaded question because I'm bringing home a lot of stuff, all kinds of stuff. Um, but I think the, the things that really mean a lot to me that I get from Disney are kind of like those little souvenirs that you can have on you or around you like all the time. Uh, one of my favorite ones uh, was uh, it was a Disney lanyard that I had on my keys at one point, and I actually I pulled the lanyard part off, uh, so it was really just this like little flag uh, that said Walt Disney World, um, and it's always on my keys, and I always get to look at it every day, and I I think about my my trip to Disney World that year, um, so I I really enjoy those ones, um, but honestly. Um, a lot of the times I actually enjoy buying little things for friends. Um, I love getting like little keepsakes for my friends and, and give to them uh, that I got at Disney. Uh, I'm actually going to be shopping for um, my friend's uh, 
newborn um, that he just had. Uh, we've talked about him a couple of times. Eventually, we're going to have him on the show, I swear. <laughs> um, uh, my my buddy, John. But um, that's that's exciting for me, just kind of like finding something for his little girl um, and something that she would like. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, just kind of those little things. Um, I, I never really go to Disney looking for like something real big. Uh, I'm really excited about I'm going to buy um, a new spirit jersey. Uh, on this next coming trip. Um, and so I'm really excited. about. And then that. you'll have a collection. I know. Right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, kind of like the, the small, uh, small things that I, that kind of mean, mean a lot and something that I can kind of have around um, all the time and kind of rem- remind myself of, of uh, the trip that I, that I just took. Um, I know I'm going to be in, um, the haunted mansion store um and gonna buy probably a lot there <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah just probably the, the the small things that's my answer final answer <laughs> final answer uh when i'm there i am looking for popcorn buckets mm. uh now and um i i've had people pick some up for me in the past uh we we always seem to find somebody to get us a christmas one we got a couple of those now and uh, a couple of uh uh, halloween ones and so now i'm just kind of looking for a couple that i can keep displayed all the time Mm -hmm. and so i'm excited to get back and and find some new popcorn buckets Mm -hmm. um and then, you know, as I was talking about with Star Wars, uh, I'm a big fan. So when I'm finally able to walk into that land, I'm probably going to buy all the Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> um, it'll be everything my wife can do to keep me under control. I have a feeling. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so unfortunately, I do like to collect things here and there. So I will be busy looking for items this time around or yeah and and it's funny uh when i was at star wars land i mean another small little thing that means a lot to me is i bought one of those um it's like this little little trinket that like opens up and it shows the rebellion um uh the rebellion logo uh and i think it was it was used in solo um but uh, just like that little thing that like, it's just like real cool uh, and it's just real small. And I just like, I actually have it displayed in front of my little baby Yoda that I have. Um, but yeah, it's just like those, those little things of those places uh, that you love. Um, that's kind of what I'm really into. I also like to get magic bands because there's, that's something small as well. And I can put, you know, I put that on and, people ask me about it and then I get a chance to talk about Disney mm-hmm. world a little bit. So, uh, that is a, a fun souvenir and I hope they're not going to be going away from them. They seem to be something, you know, like I've heard a lot of talk about using your phone instead of magic bands. And I really enjoy my magic magic bands and I'd rather use a magic band than my phone. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping that they, slowly go away from those if that's what they're going to be doing i honestly don't think they would and this is kind of like the (laughs) the businessman side of of disney where it's like it's just another thing that people will buy um if it's something that like you i mean you you really you don't need a magic band you can use your your card card to the world um for all of that stuff uh but it's just another thing that people can buy and they do buy and they will buy so i i mean i I don't see that going away anytime soon especially if it's if it's still making disney money so i i understand that they're that um they're not going to be giving them out for free now when you when you book and i mean that, that makes a lot of sense um i don't think i've ever actually gotten a free one (laughs) i've always (laughs) paid more to have um to have a, a fancy one so I mean that's I'm I'm not heartbroken that I won't be getting my free gray magic band. <laughs> We've always taken the free ones and we will um you know I'll go in and I'll put their names on the one and pick out the color that they want mm-hmm. and 
then uh, we'll so we'll take those and and you know we'll go with those and if somebody finds one that they think that they need to buy you know it's usually me that does that but mm -hmm. and my wife has bought a couple as well so you know then we'll we'll have those as well but mm -hmm. we've always taken the free ones that that they'll send and and I guess you can still get them at a discount mm -hmm. um, now instead of it being just sent to you so yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, and it means a lot. I'm actually after recording this now, now that I'm like three days away from Disney, I'm probably going to break out mine and start wearing it. It's about time. <laughs> <laughs> I would always have to get mine on as I'm waiting for the plane, mm -hmm. if not sooner. But... Yeah. Cool. Well, that is uh, all we got for you guys today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, let us know uh, on our Facebook some of the things that you really enjoy uh, and answer some of these questions that we asked each other um, and just let us know uh, what you think. So when you guys are listening, make sure you, whoever you're listening with, go out and hit that subscribe button so that you're notified that uh, we have a new episode coming out. Uh, then you be sure to never miss another episode. Um, and also if there's somebody that you think would enjoy listening to us, let them know about it. Tell them that you've got this awesome podcast of two guys sitting around talking about merchandise. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it would be great to have some more listeners. And uh, as Mikhailo said, get on Facebook to our page. And we also have a community group that is uh, answering questions and helping each other out with trips. And we'd love to have you come out there and join us. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time on Miles from Main Street. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed the show, please rate us on iTunes and subscribe. Email us at milesfrommainstreetpodcast at gmail.com with any thoughts and visit us on Facebook under Miles from Main Street. We'll be bringing more to you weekly and look forward to talking to you then. Until next week, remember, some live close, but most of us don't. So let's talk about it. 